Today is April 1st, 2024. Happy Fool's Day. My name is Nicodemus and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast, where we dive deep into the world of artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency. Today's episode navigates the tumultuous waters of cryptocurrency regulation, groundbreaking advancements in AI, and the implications of these technologies on society and the economy. From consensus defending Ethereum's security features to significant legal developments affecting the cryptocurrency and AI sectors, we explore the pivotal moments and discussions shaping the future of digital innovation and regulation. Consensus is a prominent player in the blockchain and Web3 software development space. They're known for the popular MetaMask wallet, and they have confidently addressed the U.S. SEC's concerns regarding the potential for fraud and manipulation in Ethereum's proof-of-stake system, especially in relation to spot Ether exchange-traded funds. In a comment letter to the SEC, Consensus argues that the concerns surrounding the security of Ethereum's POS mechanism and its implications for spot Ether ETFs are unfounded, presenting a case for the robustness and integrity of Ethereum's infrastructure. Ethereum's transition from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake ignited a debate on its security and vulnerability to manipulation. However, Consensus points out several key features that not only match but surpass the security protocols of Bitcoin's proof-of-work system. The same system that underpins the Bitcoin-based ETFs, previously approved by the SEC. Among these features are Ethereum's quicker block finality, penalties for validator infractions, and notably, Ethereum's superior environmental sustainability. Their argument extends to highlight Ethereum's vast developer community and its operation on a transparent and public blockchain. They emphasize the platform's openness and the difficulty of concealing fraudulent or manipulative activities. According to consensus, these characteristics should alleviate the SEC's concerns and prompt them to recognize Ethereum's advanced security capabilities, potentially paving the way for the approval of spot Ether ETFs. Now, the discussion around the approval of a spot Ether ETF is intensifying as the SEC's decision deadline approaches, with multiple applications from firms like Fidelity, Ashdex, and ARC21 shares awaiting verdicts. The crypto community is closely watching the outcome evidenced by significant bets placed on predictions markets regarding the SEC's decision. The situation is juxtaposed against the backdrop of the SEC's recent approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs, which has added another layer of anticipation and speculation about the future of Ether ETFs. Grayscale is an investment management company with a vested interest in the approval of spot Ether ETFs. They remain optimistic about a favorable SEC's decision. Grayscale's chief legal officer's remarks about the SEC's lack of engagement not being indicative of the outcome adds to the complex narrative surrounding the regulatory approval process for cryptocurrency-based investment products. As the crypto and regulatory landscapes continue to evolve, the dialogue between innovators like consensus and regulatory bodies like the SEC becomes ever more crucial. The unfolding developments in the approval process of spot Ether ETFs will likely serve as a significant milestone in the broader integration of cryptocurrencies into the regulated financial system, potentially influencing future regulatory frameworks and the adoption of blockchain technology across various sectors. Sticking with the regulatory theme here, the U.S. District Court for the District of Wyoming made a significant decision that impacts Custodia Bank, a Wyoming-based digital asset bank. The court rejected Custodia's plea for a Federal Reserve Master Account. This ruling underscores the complexities and challenges faced by institutions operating within the crypto sector in navigating regulatory frameworks. Custodia Bank sought to equalize its operational capabilities with traditional banking institutions. They now find themselves at a critical juncture, with implications that extend beyond its immediate interests to the broader crypto and blockchain banking landscape. Custodia's appeal for a master account, a critical tool in enabling access to the Federal Reserve's services, was driven by its desire to offer custodial services for crypto assets on par with those provided by conventional banks. Without such an account, Custodia argued it's regulated to a second-class citizen status, dependent on intermediary banks and at a competitive disadvantage. The situation brings to light the intricate balance between fostering innovation in financial technologies and maintaining stringent regulatory standards to safeguard the financial system's integrity. Judge Scott Scavdall ruled on Custodia's plea. In doing so, he highlighted that federal laws do not obligate the Federal Reserve to grant every eligible depository institution access to its master account system. Furthermore, the decision emphasized the Federal Reserve Bank's discretion in evaluating master account applications, potentially setting a precedent that could influence the regulatory approach to other crypto-centric banking initiatives. Custodia's endeavor to challenge the Federal Reserve's decision illustrates the ongoing tensions between emerging financial technologies and established regulatory norms. The bank's case reflects a broader industry dilemma how to reconcile the innovative potential of blockchain and crypto assets with the regulatory imperatives of financial stability, fraud prevention, and anti-money laundering efforts. The Federal Reserve's rejection of Custodia's application cites Custodia's involvement in the crypto space as inconsistent with legal requirements. 
This indicates a cautious stance by regulatory authorities towards integrating crypto services into the mainstream financial system. This cautious approach is further corroborated by Custodia's status as one of Wyoming's first special purpose depository institutions. This means they're designated to facilitate banking services for businesses dealing with crypto. Apparently, that's not enough to secure a master account. In the aftermath of this ruling, Custodia's commitment to exploring all available options, including an appeal, indicates a resolve to continue advocating for regulatory clarity and equitable treatment for institutions at the intersection of traditional banking and digital asset management. This case, while specific to Custodia, echoes wider industry calls for regulatory frameworks that accommodate the unique characteristics and needs of the digital asset ecosystem. As the landscape of financial technologies evolves, the dialogue between regulatory bodies and crypto-centric banks like Custodia will be key in shaping the environment that both stimulates innovation and upholds the foundational principles of financial regulation. The outcome of Custodia's continued efforts and the broader regulatory response to similar cases will likely have significant implications for the future of banking in the digital asset space, influencing both market participants and regulatory strategies. Now let's shift our focus from the regulatory world to the courtroom. Roman Storm is a developer and co-founder of Tornado Cash. He's challenging the criminal charges brought against him, asserting that the indictment is fatally flawed and rests on misconceptions about the nature of software development and the functionality of Tornado Cash. His legal team filed a motion to dismiss the charges. Charges that include conspiracy to commit money laundering, operate an unlicensed money transmitting business, and violate the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. He's potentially looking at a serious amount of time behind bars. At the core of Storm's defense is the argument that the development and publication of Tornado Cash cannot be equated with money laundering or the operation of a money transmitting service. That's because Tornado Cash is a set of non-custodial smart contracts designed to enhance financial privacy for crypto users. The distinction is crucial, as Tornado Cash enables users to maintain full control and ownership of their assets without relying on intermediaries. That's different from traditional financial services that might fall under the regulatory scope intended by the charges. Furthermore, Storm's defense challenges the notion that he could conspire with or have any influence over individuals who later use Tornado Cash for illicit purposes. They point out that there was no corroboration or agreement with these people. The point is bolstered by the fact that the Tornado Cash smart contracts were designed to be open source and free, with no fees charged for their use. That kind of undercuts the premise that Tornado Cash operated as a business in the traditional sense. The defense also leverages the First Amendment, arguing that writing and publishing code constitutes protected speech. This perspective frames the prosecution of Storm as an unprecedented attempt to criminalize software development. That argument raises broader concerns about the implications for innovation and freedom of expression within the tech community. Storm's case has garnered significant attention and support from the DeFi community, with nearly $1.5 million raised for a legal defense fund. This outpouring of support reflects the broader stakes of the case, stakes that extend beyond the individual charges against Storm to encompass critical questions about the regulation of blockchain technology, the scope of developers' responsibilities for how their creations are used, and the protection of privacy-enhancing tools within the digital asset ecosystem. As the legal proceedings unfold, the outcome of both Storm's motion to dismiss and the broader case will likely have far-reaching implications for the crypto sector, regulatory approaches to digital assets, and the ongoing debate over the intersection of technology, privacy, and law enforcement. The DeFi community and regulatory observers will be watching closely, as the resolution of these issues will shape the landscape of innovation and regulation in the rapidly evolving world of blockchain and cryptocurrency. From the U.S. legal system, let's shift our attention across the pond, where a U.K. court has implemented a global freeze on Craig Wright's assets. That amounts to approximately $8.4 million in funds frozen to prevent him from circumventing court costs. This, of course, follows a lawsuit brought by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance. They challenged Wright's assertion that he was Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin. The court's decision was delivered by Judge James Mellor. The judge did not hold back in his response to Wright's claims, ruling that he was not Nakamoto, nor the author of the Bitcoin white paper, or the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. The legal proceedings against Wright highlight the ongoing battle over the identity of Bitcoin's founder and the implications of such claims on the crypto community and intellectual property rights. Wright's attempt to transfer shares of his London-based firm to a Singapore-based entity shortly after the court's verdict raised questions about his intent to evade the financial consequences of the trial. Judge Malore's decision to freeze Wright's assets reflects the severity of these concerns and underscores the court's commitment to enforcing accountability. The ruling against Wright represents a victory for COPA and its members, which include prominent companies like Coinbase, Block, Meta, MicroStrategy, Kraken, Paradigm, Uniswap, and WorldCoin. COPA was established in 2020. It aims to foster the adoption and advancement of cryptocurrency technologies by eliminating patents as barriers to growth and innovation. 
This legal outcome reinforces COPA's mission and sets a precedent for the protection of open source principles in the crypto space. Wright's legal battles and the subsequent freezing of his assets draw attention to the broader issues of copyright claims and the ownership of foundational cryptocurrency documents and technologies. The Bitcoin white paper, now under an MIT open source license, showcases the collaborative spirit of the crypto community. It allows anyone to use, modify, and distribute the code freely. This case underscores the importance of defending the open source nature of crypto against anyone seeking to leverage intellectual property claims for personal gain or to stifle innovation. As the crypto community continues to navigate the complexities of international property law, the outcome of Wright's case with COPA may serve as a deterrent to similar claims in the future, thereby promoting a more inclusive and collaborative environment for the development of blockchain technologies. Now let's change gears and look in on the artificial intelligence world. OpenAI's voice engine marks a pivotal advancement in voice synthesis technology, offering the capability to create extremely realistic and emotionally expressive synthetic voices. All it takes is a brief 15-second audio sample. This breakthrough is part of a wider trend in AI development that increasingly blurs the line between authentic and artificial. Frankly, it opens exciting possibilities for innovation, while also raising concerns about the potential for misuse. I'll get to the misuse here in a bit. The applications of voice engine go far beyond simple voice mimicry. It presents the opportunity to profoundly impact various sectors. They're doing things like giving individuals with speech impairments the ability to communicate in their own voice, or enabling content creators to engage global audiences in multiple languages without losing their unique vocal identity. Although I've always wondered about how they handle the tone of voice during the translation thing. Is your tone of voice emphasizing the right words? These uses underscore the technology's potential to greatly enhance both accessibility and personalization in digital interactions. However, the capabilities of voice cloning technology also carry significant risks specifically in the realms of privacy, security, and the authenticity of communication. The ease with which it can replicate a person's voice poses risks of facilitating deceptive practices, spreading misinformation, or impersonating individuals without consent. Now, these risks are not merely theoretical. There have been substantiated instances of misuse. For example, voice cloning has been employed in scams or to gain unauthorized access to secured accounts. This underscores the critical need for comprehensive regulatory and ethical frameworks to manage the deployment and application of these technologies responsibly. OpenAI is acknowledging these concerns. They've adopted a cautious stance towards releasing voice engine. OpenAI is limiting testing to a select group of partner companies under stringent conditions. This approach is reflective of a wider ethos within the AI field. It emphasizes the necessity of balancing the pursuit of technological advancement with the obligation to ensure these innovations benefit humanity and don't cause harm. The development and controlled rollout of Voice Engine reflects the changing landscape of AI governance. This involves a collaborative effort among tech companies, regulatory bodies, and the general public to manage the complexities of integrating such advanced technologies into society. OpenAI's advocacy for adapting to the capabilities and challenges presented by synthetic voice technology highlights the broader challenges of incorporating sophisticated AI technologies into a world that may not be fully prepared for their impact. As we move towards broader adoption of AI technologies like Voice Engine, the conversation around their deployment emphasizes the utmost importance of ethical considerations and proactive regulation. The establishment of international standards and regulatory frameworks is crucial. Frameworks tailored to address the unique challenges posed by synthetic media. This ensures the immense potential of AI can be harnessed responsibly. In this, Voice Engine represents both the transformative promise of AI in enhancing human communication and is a reminder of the necessity for vigilant oversight in the era of advanced artificial intelligence. Because OpenAI's Voice Engine has become a bit of a focal point in the ongoing debate around ethical use and implications of artificial intelligence and voice synthesis, particularly within the creative industries. Sarah Poyser is a celebrated stage actress known for her role in Mamma Mia. Her situation emphasizes the complexities of the debate. Her replacement by AI in a BBC documentary underscores the dual-edged nature of AI applications. On one hand, it demonstrates AI's ability to make significant contributions, such as restoring the power of speech to those who have lost it due to illness. On the other, it raises concerns about the displacement of human talent. The ethical considerations surrounding AI voice synthesis extend beyond its capacity to aid those with speech impairments or to break down language barriers for content creators. The potential misuse of this technology includes impersonation and fraud. That means we need a cautious and responsible approach to its deployment. The BBC's choice to employ AI in this sensitive context has inadvertently highlighted the broader implications for human artists and the authenticity of their work. Their actions have sparked debate among actors, voiceover artists, and unions about the role of AI in the arts and its impact on jobs and genuine expression. In the US, we had a long strike over the topic, although it seems like one union is fully prepared to embrace AI. I'll get to that in a bit. 
Now, in response to these concerns, OpenAI has taken a prudent approach to the rollout of Voice Engine. They've restricted its application to a select group of partners and established guidelines to ensure informed consent and transparency regarding AI's involvement. This careful strategy reflects a broader, industry-wide effort to balance the advantages of AI technologies with the potential risks they pose to privacy, security, and ethical norms. The situation underscores the pressing need for collaborative dialogue and regulation among technologists, policymakers, artists, and the broader public. We need to figure out how to navigate the ethical complexities posed by AI advancements. As AI technology continues to evolve, the establishment of comprehensive ethical guidelines and regulatory frameworks becomes crucial to ensuring these tools facilitate human creativity and welfare without undermining individual rights or societal values. The discussion triggered by OpenAI's voice engine and the BBC's application of AI in documentary production serves as a reminder of the challenges of technological advancement. While AI offers remarkable prospects for innovation and inclusivity, it also presents hurdles that demand thoughtful consideration and collective effort to overcome. Moving forward, finding a balance between harnessing AI's potential and preserving the fundamental aspects of human creativity and labor will be imperative. But this demonstrates how the landscape of work and labor is going to significantly transform due to the advancements of artificial intelligence. AI is impacting various sectors from tech boot camps to traditional labor unions. One striking example is the closure of a triangle coding boot camp. After that boot camp has successfully placed more than 400 graduates in tech jobs over six years. The boot camp's decision to end its program underscores the profound influence of AI on the demand for entry-level coding jobs. They attributed this shift to generative AI programs capable of performing coding tasks at a novice level. This development raises concerns about the future of tech job opportunities, particularly for new graduates entering the field. And I can see why. I'm glad our oldest boy has decided not to follow in my footsteps and is becoming an electrician instead. AI's impact extends beyond coding boot camps. It's prompting discussions within the labor movement about the challenges and opportunities that AI presents. Liz Schuler is the president of the AFL-CIO, America's largest labor union federation. She sees AI as a potential catalyst for revitalizing the labor movement. Her perspective highlights a growing awareness among workers across various industries about the risks and opportunities AI introduces to job security and workplace dynamics. The tech industry's job landscape has seen shifts. There's been a noted decrease in certain tech positions due to AI automation. That decrease parallels the broader trends of job shedding in the sector. These changes are not isolated incidents. They're part of a larger narrative of tech advancement impacting the labor markets. For instance, Momentum Learning's closure reflects the broader concerns about AI's role in reshaping demand for certain skills and jobs. And let's be clear, their decision emphasizes the need for workers and educational institutions to adapt to these technological shifts. Schuler's vision for the labor market's engagement with AI focuses on ensuring workers have a voice in how AI technologies are developed, regulated, and deployed. This approach aims to navigate the potential displacement and devaluation of labor, while they are also seeking opportunities for AI to augment and enhance worker roles, not replace them. Through initiatives like the AFL-CIO's Technology Institute, in partnership with companies like Microsoft, Schuler advocates for a collaborative approach to integrating AI into the workplace highlighting the importance of worker input in shaping the future of work. These developments represent a critical juncture for the labor movement and industries affected by AI. They suggest a path forward that includes active engagement and collaboration between workers, unions, companies, and lawmakers. By advocating for a seat at the table in discussion about AI's role in the economy, the labor movement seeks to influence how technological advancements can benefit workers and society at large. As AI continues to evolve, the dialogue around its implications for the labor market and worker rights becomes increasingly relevant. The experiences of the Triangle Coding Bootcamp and the AFL-CIO's proactive stance on AI represent key facets of the ongoing conversation, underscoring the importance of preparing for and actively shaping the technological transformations that lie ahead. Because the race for dominance in artificial intelligence technology is increasingly becoming a focal point of global tech rivalry, particularly between the U.S. and China. The U.S. and its leading AI research institutions and companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are leading in the development of foundational large language models essential for generative AI. This advantage is further compounded by significant venture capital investments, substantial enough to dwarf the investments made by China, even though China has a vast AI talent pool and they've made serious efforts to catch up. They're still facing challenges due to U.S. restrictions on exporting advanced AI chips, chips that are critical for AI development. China's strategy to close the AI gap involves leveraging open-source LLMs like Meta's Llama 1. They're also fostering innovation within its tech giants, such as Baidu, Alibaba, and Huawei. 
Now we've talked about Baidu's ErnieBot before. It's a chat GPT competitor and an example of China's potential to rapidly achieve mass adoption of its AI technologies. The country's focus on developing homegrown AI capabilities can also be seen in its investment in large language models and efforts to build an independent chip industry to mitigate the impact of U.S. export controls. On the international front, the U.S. and Japan are poised to deepen cooperation in AI and semiconductors. This brings to light the strategic importance of these technologies in the U.S.-China tech rivalry. The proposed collaboration aims to strengthen research and development in AI, involving leading tech companies and potentially countering China's advances in the field. This competition highlights several critical themes in the global tech landscape. First, the role of foundational LLMs in generative AI in setting the pace for innovation and their implications for various industries. Second, the impact of geopolitical tensions and export controls on global supplies underscores the strategic importance of semiconductor technology. And third, the potential for international collaborations to shape the future of AI development and deployment. Now, China seeks to overcome these challenges. The U.S. seeks to maintain its technological edge. And in between, the global AI race underscores the need for ethical considerations, regulatory frameworks, and international cooperation to ensure AI advances serve the broader interests of humanity. The evolution of this rivalry will likely influence not only the tech industry, but also economic, security, and social dynamics worldwide. So, what happened? Consensus stepped up to address the SEC's concerns about Ethereum's proof-of-stake mechanism. They present a compelling case for the security and integrity of Ethereum's infrastructure, an argument that could influence the future of spot Ether ETFs. A federal court's decision to reject Custodia's appeal for our Federal Reserve Master Account highlighted the regulatory hurdles faced by crypto-centric banking initiatives. It really points out the need for a balance between innovation and regulatory compliance. Roman Storm, a co-founder of Tornado Cash, challenged the criminal charges against him sparking debate over the nature of software development and the functionality of decentralized platforms in the legal system. A UK court's decision to freeze Craig Wright's assets underscored the ongoing legal battles over the identity of Bitcoin's creator and the implications for intellectual property rights within the crypto community. OpenAI's voice engine represents a significant advancement in voice synthesis technology, raising both excitement for its potential applications and concerns about the ethical implications of such realistic voice cloning. The BBC's choice to employ AI in voice synthesis for a documentary sparked a broader discussion on the ethics of AI in creative industries and its impact on human talent. The closure of a coding boot camp due to AI's impact on entry-level coding jobs, combined with the AFL-CIO's proactive stance on AI in the workforce, reflect the evolving landscape of labor in the digital age. The global AI arms race, particularly between the US and China, highlighted the strategic importance of AI technology in geopolitical rivalry and the need for ethical, regulatory, and cooperative frameworks to navigate the future of AI development. As we continue to witness these transformations, the dialogue between innovators, regulators, and the broader community becomes increasingly crucial in shaping a future that leverages the benefits of digital technologies while safeguarding against their risks. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.